a partially consumed cold coffee drink, a nearly empty bottle of over-the-counter medicine, a houseplant struggling for life, an unwashed frying pan containing a napkin, two steak knives and a spaghetti server. They, alongside a stack of red Solo cups, several cereal bowls with spoons still in them, and an empty microwavable popcorn bag, are items that could be on a kitchen table in student housing anywhere in the country. But these articles represent the lives of five girls, who until 20 days ago were enjoying life sharing a home close to their University of Idaho campus. Now, three of them and one of their boyfriends are gone, leaving behind the objects of their everyday existence that are now on view through the windows of 1122 King Road, Moscow. And as cops prepare to turn over the house where Kaylee, Maddie, Zayna and Ethan lost their lives back to its landlord, the home is frozen in time, albeit from less than three weeks ago. At night, the house is lit by an eerie glow, coming through the top floor where Kaylee, 21, lived and died. It emanates from a computer monitor in her bedroom that, despite the dozens of investigators who have traipsed through the three-story home in the past days, no one has switched off. On the screen, visible through the window, are the words, No Network Detected. The computer to which it was attached is in the Moscow Police Department, as investigators hope it will help them find the depraved killer. Kaylee, Maddie, 21, and Zayna, 20, lived in the home with 19-year-olds Bethany and Dylan, who were spared during the attack. Ethan, 20, was visiting his girlfriend Zayna when the killer struck. The house where they died was known locally as a party house. Hints of that can be seen through the window to the main living area. A row of red Solo cups is lined up on a white plastic table, a sure sign of beer pong parties. Also on the table is an empty Bud Light lime beer bottle, a potato chip bag and a blue serving bowl. On the back wall hangs a garland of artificial greenery, complete with a Good Vibes neon sign that remains illuminated. A pink pastel abstract painting, clearly a girl's touch, hangs on another wall. Underneath the painting stands a table with holiday lights wrapped around it, showing the students had their minds already on Christmas, even though the murders occurred 11 days before Thanksgiving. The house is still cordoned off by yellow police tape, but the search inside has largely ended. The house has given up whatever secrets it has, as police are no longer trudging through it, although they stand guard outside night and day. Police have announced no suspects and have not found the murder weapon, despite an intensive search. Five snow-covered vehicles that stood outside the house were towed to a more secure long-term storage location on Tuesday. There, officers will continue processing evidence, Moscow cops said. Police continue to insist the four students were the victims of a targeted killing, but cannot or will not say which one was the intended victim. According to investigators, Maddie and Kaylee had been out at a bar and the food truck before returning home at 1.56am that Sunday. Zayna and Ethan had been at a fraternity house and returned home about the same time. Their other housemates got back about 45 minutes earlier. The two girls were found in their beds on the top floor of the house, with cops maintaining they were still asleep when the unknown assailant stabbed them with a knife. At a vigil on Wednesday night, Kaylee's father, Steve, revealed his daughter and Maddie died in the same bed. Steve has spoken out about his frustrations with the slow investigation and revealed why he didn't give his daughter a funeral. He said, quote, My wife's biggest fear, part of the reason we didn't have a funeral, is because she couldn't be guaranteed that the monster was not going to be there. Kaylee's father said he had learned that his daughter did not suffer in her final moments, but did have large punctures from a brutal weapon that police say the killer was, quote, proud of. The detective said this weapon is probably something the killer paid money for, and something that they're proud of, he said. Kaylee's father previously told Fox News' Lawrence Jones how he had not heard anything from law enforcement since Wednesday at 5pm 
The same night, local authorities gave a disastrous press conference in which they admitted they have no suspects in her and her friend's murders and have not yet recovered a murder weapon. They're kind of just telling me that they can't tell me much, which is frustrating to me because I've been very trustworthy, Kaylee's father said of the investigators, revealing, quote, I do know things that I haven't shared. Steve said he does not want to talk badly about law enforcement because they are hard-working individuals claiming he would be doomed without them. Police say they are not releasing a profile of the suspect because it could lead to more fear and suspicion in the college town, which is already on edge following the gruesome murders, with some students refusing to return to classes. It will potentially put more fear, more suspicion on a wide variety of people versus if we use that to really refine where we're at in our investigation. Idaho State Police Communications Director Aaron Snell told Jones, quote, I think that will be more pertinent. And so if we just provide information to the public, I just don't think that's going to be a wise choice. In the meantime, Kaylee's father said, we're holding our tongue, we're waiting patiently, but we're definitely concerned. He asked anyone with information about his daughter's whereabouts the night of November the 12th and into November the 13th to come forward and speak to law enforcement officials, saying they may provide the missing key to helping unravel the mystery. Kaylee and Maddie had spent much of their last night at the Corner Club, a Moscow dive bar popular with students. Around 1.30am, the pair were caught on camera purchasing a portion of carbonara pasta from the grub truck a food truck that offers late-night eats on weekends. Parked up close to the Moscow branch of Insurer's State Farm and outdoor store Hyperspud Sports, Maddie and Kaylee were last glimpsed walking away towards what police have called a private party driver for their final ride home. The route takes less than five minutes to complete and cuts through the University of Idaho campus and passes the Sigma Chi house on the right where Zayna and Ethan were at a party. According to police, the pair arrived home at 1.45am, at the same time as Ethan and Zayna, and 45 minutes after Dylan and Bethany, who both survived the attack. Less than two hours later, Maddie, Kaylee, Zayna and Ethan were dead, butchered as they slept by a knife-wielding villain. Autopsy results showed all four died from stab wounds to the chest, with police saying the murder weapon was a large military-style knife which still hasn't been found. Okay, so that was a recent newspaper article that I've just narrated for you there. This has been a case that I've kept a close eye on over the past couple of weeks, but haven't actually made any content up until this point, really due to the fact that I thought that someone would have been apprehended by now, but clearly this appears to be quite a complex investigation, so do expect some more future content regarding the Idaho murders to appear over the next few days. Anyway, do leave your own thoughts and theories regarding this particular case in the comments section below. If you enjoyed this video, do give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel. And I look forward to seeing you all again for the next video. Take care. Cheers.